Okay, I'm sure you're asking yourself, where is this and where am I? In fact, I'm below ground at the city, or just outside the city, of Nazca in Peru. The water here is coming from the high mountains, or possibly even the Andes, going underground and working its way gradually to the ocean. But at this point, it's been accessed, or was accessed, by the Nazca people more than 1,500 years ago. And what this is, is a spiral staircase going up from the water, which is at least 30 feet underground, and working its way up, or I'm going to be working my way up, back to the surface of the land. Nazca is an incredibly dry area. And so the majority of the water does, and basically always has, traveled underground from the mountains to the sea. And what this amazing Pukio system does is it allowed the ancient Nazca people to access this underground water, which not only is clean because it's moving through sand, but it's also still cool as compared to the ambient temperature of, uh, of the air here. And so by being able to access this water and by using these pukios actually, they were able to clean this system. If there was any debris traveling through the underground system, these pukios would be access points whereby they could take any debris out as it was passing by. It also allowed them to be able to access the sweet, cool water and use it in this environment, which is quite harsh. And in some cases, if you look at the distant mountains, absolutely nothing grows there whatsoever. It's so dry, possibly an inch of rain per year. So, just an example, of ancient indigenous genius at work 2,000 years ago and still functioning to this very day. Now, not that many people visit this area. Almost everyone flies over the Nazca lines and geoglyphs. But what they also do not realize is that the lines and geoglyphs in the area were not solely the work of the Nazca indigenous culture there was a culture prior to them who lived in the same area called the Paracas. The Paracas lived all the way from the coastal area all the way through here into the high mountain areas as well. And they were the somewhat famous people who had elongated skulls. Now what happened was about the year zero or 100 AD, the Nazca people moved into this area. They were much more warlike than the Paracas and they basically took over. When they did that, they did it in a violent way, wiped out the royal family of the Paracas who were the ones with elongated skulls. So all of a sudden, more or less, from the archeological record, the elongated skull people of this area disappear. My mission, or one of my main missions in life is to find out who these elongated skull people were, where they came from, and now I think I more or less know what happened to them. So what we're doing is we're conducting collectively with a number of people, DNA testing, carbon-14 testing, and we know another characteristic which is quite strange about the Paracas in that they had red hair, reddish auburn hair, which is not a Native American characteristic. So the question is genetically, where did that hair color come from? And in fact, where did the ancestors of the Paracas come from?